talk about the real Super Bowl. First cinema, the Oscars. Yes, there are upsets. Yes, there are players you haven't even heard of before. But let's talk about them. This year, more than any, uh, I haven't seen a lot of these movies yet. But I'm going to start a journey with you guys on YouTube. We're going to do the road to the Oscars. It's going to be great. I'm going to see all the movies that I can possibly see before they air in late March or April. All right. So I wanted to start my journey to watch all the Oscar movies uh, with you guys, The Road to the Oscars, by just doing a general first impressions reaction to the, the nominees. So um, in order to keep it as contained as possible, I'm going to try and limit myself to one minute or less responses to each category, with the exception of Best Picture, which I will elaborate on for probably two or three minutes. So, timer will be here. Let's go. Category number one, actor in a leading role. <laughs> Where the heck is Nicolas Cage? <laughs> Truly one of the Mount Rushmore performances of his career, Pig, my number one movie of 2021, is nowhere to be found at any of these Oscars. This will be repeat conversation throughout this nomination reaction list. Big snub. Big mistake. <laughs> um, so if it's not going to be Pig, it's got to be my man Will Smith with King Richard. King Richard was in my top ten of last year. Um, the Williams sisters themselves said it was a impeccable performance. It even fooled them in their soul a little bit. And who are we to judge? Who are we to cor- not? Who, who are we to correct them? on his performance if the Williams sisters believed he was their dad then we should believe he was their dad and that's the success of a biopic story actor in a supporting role at this point in filming i haven't seen enough of these movies to really say my clear winner obviously i'm going to mention pig again alex wolf deserves this supporting actor nomination um at least nomination doesn't have to win it but uh, he was not pig, big snub, and uh, so at this current session, uh, I will probably be rooting for Jesse Plemons to get the role from Power of Dog. I like Jesse Plemons, and I've watched about twenty minutes of Power of Dog, and can already tell you it's gonna be all right, or at least worthwhile. Actress in the leading role. The highlight here is obviously Spencer, or the movie I like to call. Everyone finally figured out Kristen Stewart can actually act. (laughs) It's like, oh yeah, she can. I tell you what, the Twilight movies totally sandbagged K-Stu and R-Pats. They just, like, no one believes them. Robert Pattinson is about to kill it as Batman. He's done amazing stuff. The Lighthouse, oh my gosh. Kristen Stewart, she's a few steps behind my man R-Pats, but she's done some great work. And so... She's got a promising career ahead of her. But can I just be real? Can we be done with Princess Diana? Like, I'm sorry. I'm not a history buff. My wife is. But even even she was like, okay, we watched The Crown. It was incredible. Don't need to repeat it again. Then it was like all over the news, anniversary crap for the entire year. And then they made a movie. I'm like, all right, we get it. She was cool. She was good. And it was tragedy. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Actress in a supporting role. Again, I haven't really seen any of these. I mean, I legitimately haven't seen any of them. So I don't have any current beef. Uh, I've got to say that Ariana DeBose, Ariana Ariana D, as I'm going to say, <laughs> uh, she's done a lot of other things that I've seen her in minor roles and other TV shows. And I've got to say thumbs up. So I'm just going to say she should get it. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is going to be the toughest one yet. Animated feature film. Ah. So if you watch my Film Reels 2021 uh, ranked list, you'll know that Mitchell's and the Machines is my number one choice. It was my number four movie of the year. Um, It is incredibly artistic, incredibly unique, and still tells a story that can be related, whether you're 65 or 6. So... Just beautiful family dynamics being worked out in a crazy, fun, sci-fi comedy post-apocalypse. So, 
two thumbs up there. But obviously, I also made an Encanto review, and I think Encanto is very relatable. Even though it's giving some meh first impressions, I think overall it has a amazing soundtrack and it it really sticks it gets to the heart of family drama so i'd be fine if that one win that'd be my second choice third choice would be raya i love raya uh didn't make my top 10 but definitely my top 20 of last year it was a crazy thematic blend of guardians of the galaxy meets indiana jones with a splash a literal splash of aladdin i mean what more could you ask for beautiful fun really cool cinematography obviously i gotta pick dune my number two movie of last year debatably number one it was fighting with pig but i mean from a filmmaking standpoint the cinematography smacks it smacks it is so good so like you gotta go with dune specifically christopher nolan in this regard it was like wow this is like sci-fi done well it's like a beautiful blend of cgi and real and practical and that's all through the cinematography that's all the power of cinematography first and then the editing later it's beautiful like truly a filmmaking prowess to blend the christopher nolans of the world and then the everyday average film <laughs> film fan so just both everyone can agree on dune being a beautiful spectacle should be awarded for a spectacle for sure however if that doesn't win i've only watched 20 minutes of power of dog but the cinematography is gorgeous so i mean you can't you can't beat golden hour on the on the prairie so i can understand if that wins okay okay costume design okay does can this go to anyone else other than corella i don't think so it's gotta be corella I mean, the movie's literally about fashion design, so come on. it's It's got to be that one. If it's not, ugh, I don't even know. <sighs> Directing. What the heck? Why is Denis Villeneuve not in this category? This is like the whole freaking Argo thing all over again. Like, Ben Affleck should have got Best Director for Argo, and then Argo went to win Best Picture, but... Affleck was snubbed out of it like what is with the Academy like in the last few years just being like all right we'll do an actor we'll do cinematography no directing because clearly the directors don't have any influence on why it would be the best picture of the year oh wait <laughs> so dumb so yeah that's super dumb that he he took 80s garbage <laughs> and a crazy ridiculous book and made it into something that is palatable for fans of Fast and the Furious and Transformers movies, as well as the snob, you know, we've already talked about this. Like, it blends, it is palatable to all audiences. Like, how did he do that? It's all through the power of his vision and his love, his brainchild. With that said, um, my other choice might be Paul Thomas Anderson for Licorice Pizza. That's definitely not everyone's cup of tea, but truly transported me. Very Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood vibes. I mean, just totally put me in that period, and like I was all in, like super time travel. So like that's a power of a director's vision for sure. All right, documentary feature. These are gonna be quick, but let's give a big shout out to Questlove for Summer of Soul. Uh, excited that uh, excited that he is taking on the director's chair. Like that's pretty cool. I will actually watch that one. Um, and then um, shout out for Flea, double nominated. Super weird. Dominated for animated feature. Dominated for documentary feature. I think we just gotta stop. We gotta stop. Pin. Uh, not pigeonholing we've got to stop compartmentalizing and putting animation in a box we got to respect it to be all across it can't just be one category because this is clearly this is clearly a medium being used well for other genres like it's a medium it's not a genre so i don't know so it's interesting i would rather flee win documentary than animated feature because 
the other animated nominees are narratives and not a documentary. So it's kind of apples and oranges. Documentary short, I haven't watched these. I definitely am not watching these. I'll watch whichever one wins. <laughs> Film editing. Okay, again, Dune, the editing, goes with the cinematography, beautiful spectacle, masterwork of filmmaking, love it, gotta go with Dune. Uh, don't look up, are you kidding me? I mean, there's some okay shots in here, but like, the transitions in this movie did not make any sense. It was just like, da 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 da, we're watching a ma uh, uh, introverted, an introverted scientist uh, make out with a news, you know, a rich news person and uh, now we're gonna show a picture of a hippo and a hummingbird and then go to the next scene it's like what I don't know the editing didn't make sense at all gotta go with Dune and just based on the trailers and clips that have been shown on the internet of Tick Tick Boom I'd even give Tick Tick Boom like as my number two for this category okay international feature film Flea is triple nominated what the heck what is this it's a, it's nominated for international feature. It's nominated for documentary feature. It's nominated for animated feature. Surely there were other nominees that we could have filled in, in and just chosen whichever one best fits. We've got to figure this out. There's a glitch in the matrix, and the system needs to work out its kinks. Um. Yeah, Drive My Car is double nominated. We haven't learned from Parasite being double nominated. Uh, I haven't watched Drive My Car, but I would imagine if it's nominated, good enough to be nominated for Best Picture, it probably has a chance. So let's just take it out of international and just keep it straight in Best Picture. Makeup and hairstyling, I really don't care. I don't care about this category. But if Cruella does not win costume design, come on. Give Cruella the, the hairstyle and makeup. Come on. Come on. Just do it. Let's go with music. Film score, baby. I love it. Let's go. All right. So, obviously, don't look up. Get it out of here. Don't care. Dune. Yes, sir. Dune. Hans Zimmer. Like, nothing has clearly been better for you than breaking away from Christopher Nolan. Gosh, you're droning. Blah, 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 blah. Like, while that is in this, it is more creative and more inventive. This is this is throwing it back for you. Like this is showing us fresh, new Hans Zimmer and not the same, like identical like that made you a meme of working with Christopher Nolan that year after year and all of those scores sound exactly the same. <laughs> and so this and several of the other works that came out last year are incredibly unique and like the soundscape is <laughs> um but Encanto obviously great soundtrack, uh film score interlaced between all these songs, solid work, worthy. Okay, music, best original song, you got to go with Dos Orguitas. I I, I can't. I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce it well. I can if 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 the music was playing, I could sing it a little bit better. But um, obviously, in Canto, this people are like, well, Bruno is the top charter. Why isn't Bruno the song? Well, it's because Bruno is not the subject. It's not the heart. It's not the heart of the whole movie. This song, this song is the heart of the entire movie. It literally just lays out the whole just everything so that's why it deserves to be an oscar and then i haven't heard most of the rest so obviously my second choice would be no time to die billy eilish did a surprisingly great job fitting in as the bond song really good very memorable uh let's go with production design I mean, honestly, we're getting into the part where it could be any of these. Um, obviously, I'm a broken record. I got to go with Dune. Dune for all of these. This is so, so good. Um, production was great. Um, Nightmare Alley, I can only assume the best from old Guillermo del Toro. Um, but we'll wait and see about that. Power of Dog from the 20 minutes I've seen. It's okay. I don't know if it's best production design. Tragic and Macbeth. I mean, it's all black and white. Come on. <laughs> Uh, West Side Story probably has a... It's, so I would probably rank it Dune, 
West Side Story, The Nightmare Alley would probably be my t- like ranking order of who should win this category. Um, just based off what I've seen of all of those. Short film, animated. I haven't seen any of these, but I do have Robin Robin to on my list. It's on Netflix, I believe. And I've seen a lot of things on Letterboxd about this one. And it seems to be a pretty big crowd pleaser. Short film, live action. Haven't watched any of these. Probably won't. So, moving on. Okay, let's go with sound. Just sound. Gotta be Dune. Come on, Dune. It's the... Just the world and the grit of sand and all of the machines working and just the... It really is a great soundscape. Um, no Time to Die is pretty good. Power of Dog, not a whole lot of sound, but I understand, like, and cattle moving and all this stuff. Like, I guess I can see why that would be good. West Side Story. <sighs> West Side Story, I don't really know if that would be worthy of the sound outside of... I mean, it's got to focus on the songs, right? So, visual fix. Yikes. What a cluster. (sighs) Dune should obviously get it, but Free Guy? Come on. Free Guy got nominated and Pig didn't get nominated? How the heck did this happen? But I love Free Guy. That was in my top ten. And it had some funny, funny, funny visual effects. And, I mean, come on. You got it. I, I would not be uh, I would not be disappointed if that won. That would be hilarious. Shang-Ti and the Legend of Ten Rings. I think it's worthy of the visual effects. A lot of people think that third act is like just a hot, C- hot CBI. A lot of people think that third act is hot CGI garbage so I mean I think it's good but that's what I've heard elsewhere so I'm surprised I'll be surprised if that one then Spider-Man No Way Home good lord how is this the only category that's nominated in the critics the critics gave this movie 90% on Rotten Tomatoes not the audience the critics so I'm just saying why isn't nominated for something else but Spider-Man No Way Home Good visual effects, but that's not the point of that movie. Writing adapted screenplay. Uh, obviously doomed, unless you gotta go with Drive My Car, which I'm guessing is gonna be pretty amazing because of all the nominations. We'll see. Um, Lost Daughter, Maggie Gyllenhaal. I gotta, I gotta love the Gyllenhaal family. So, I mean, I would be fine if she won for that. And then, yeah, Dune, obviously, preparing it down from the giant book, like, to get it to where it is, it's pretty impressive. Writing original screenplay. I don't know, it's a lot of good ones. Don't Look Up, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, The Worst Person in the World, also double nominated that last one. Um, But most of these would be good. Don't look up. Ugh. I don't like it. But King Richard or Licorice Pizza would be great. But I'd also be. I'd, honestly, as long as Don't Look Up doesn't win this category, I'm great. <laughs> All right. Best picture. I've only seen four out of ten. Um, Coda looks good. Mm. Uh, Belfast looks good. Looks a little sad, but I don't know. Drive My Car. Money's on that one as far as just like worthiness of being this best cat, best picture. I don't know if it'll win. We'll see. I'll check it out later on the channel. Nightmare Alley. I mean, what I'm reading is that it's more grounded than Shape of Water, and Shape of Water won best picture. So maybe Guillermo could be back to back best picture champs. I don't know. More grounded, more relatable. I don't know. I'm just saying, I mean, definitely seem already on the trailer alone seems more relatable than making out with a fish <laughs> king richard uh just give will smith the just give will smith the win it's not really best picture of the year unless the category is best feel good movie of the year then maybe licorice pizza it's, when i'm thinking best picture of the year i want this to be something relatable to all audiences and this one is definitely not it's a little it's a little weird it's an incondolable. It it features a 
a non-condolable relationship and yet you champion for these characters to thrive whether they end up together or not and it totally transports you so it's it's really great cinema cinematic experience for those looking and those okay to be a little uncomfortable but best picture i don't know um power of dog listen from what i can tell it's just gonna be benedict cumberbatch uh you know being angry and then we finding out why he's angry that's what it seems from the trailer from the 20 minutes i've watched and i think we've seen that from benedict before so i you know I don't know if it's really best picture worthy, but that seems to be the way this award season is going, is just Power of Dog getting everything. West Side Story, I am a fan of musicals. Big fan. Um, But I don't really like uh, Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Best version of Romeo and Juliet is obviously Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. What up? But, uh, yeah, the, I haven't actually seen the first West Side Story, but I know that everyone that even everyone that's giving this movie five stars is still saying that one is slightly better. So I'm gonna watch that one. I'll eventually watch this West Side Story. It'll be good. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. But I don't know. I think it's just an overrated story. I would rather Spielberg pursue other efforts other creative endeavors with his time um yeah so enough about that okay let's talk about don't look up and how if don't look up wins best picture i will never watch the academy awards ever ever again because that would be this the sign that would be the final straw that the hollywood (laughs) elites are just patting themselves on the back giving each other back rubs thinking they're so clever and so down to earth when in fact (laughs) this movie is the most tone deaf thing hollywood has put out in a long time (laughs) so and i'm the target audience (laughs) i have never and will never vote for anyone in the trump bloodline to be in any political office ever I do believe in global warming, and that's what this movie is about. Those two things specifically, riffing on one and bringing awareness to the other. (laughs) I mean, who do they think they're reaching? (laughs) When they made this movie, they just get... I picture them just being in a bar, hanging out, and they're like, golly, what a rough two years it's been for us rich Hollywood you know actors and filmmakers it's been a tough year just living trump blah 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 our uh, constituents aka our followers are really upset about this so we just really need to make sure that he doesn't win well you won the democrats won trump got out of office and then after you won you took a crazy victory lap that was to make fun of it to make fun of trump and to bring awareness to global warming and say we're all idiots so the crazy thing is you go on your campaigns i mean ricky gervais said it best a long time ago that none of you actors have any business lecturing us on politics (laughs) just come up accept your award and move on with the night (laughs) and so like seriously you instead of doing the lecture in award accepting you made a two-hour movie just slamming it down our throats and you did that as you won what would you have done if if trump was still in office (laughs) i mean honestly the movie would be more accepted Then, in my book, if Trump was still in office and you made this movie and you got Meryl Streep to play Trump, (laughs) like, I mean, yeah, I guess that would be a lot funnier because I would be looking (laughs) like, I don't know, it just would be funnier. But you won and now you're being sore winners. (laughs) 
and you think it's relatable, which is the most embarrassing thing I've seen. <laughs> and so I just can't even go like, I can't even mention how much this movie was supposed to be made for me. And it turned me off so quickly. <laughs> I mean, there was really funny stuff. Here's the saving grace of this whole movie was freaking Timothy Chalamet in the sea of A-list, you know, legends and goats. <laughs> you got Timothy Chalamet being his little faith boy and he like his prayer at the end of this movie is the most genuine thing. It's honestly the only genuine thing in this movie that has any heart. <laughs> And I love it. So I'm here for his story arc. I didn't give this movie a zero. I said two and a half. So it's watchable. I would watch it again. But I can't believe it's nominated for Best Picture. Because it didn't change anyone's opinion. Because every Republican I know absolutely hates this movie. And just drove them to believe the exact same things that they're trying to make fun of and ward people against. And then the other people who are more democratic, they are like, oh, this is kind of like, ooh, stop. <laughs> I know, it's a, long, it's a long rant, I'm out of breath. But the other thing, if political stuff aside, what made Adam McKay's branching off of his amazing Will Ferrell movies, Adam McKay produced the best Will Ferrell movies, period. Anchorman, The Other Guys, and Step Brothers. Like, those are undeniably Will Ferrell's best comedies he's ever made. And then he made The Big Short. Wow. I love The Big Short. That was a great movie. And it was good. It used A-list actors talking about a crazy historic point. And it showed Adam McKay's political and social opinions while still telling and teaching a younger generation about um the housing crisis so like there was stuff that is true and while has a slight bias spin while having a slight bias spin it still taught me something <laughs> and so like that is the power of that movie was that it was dramatic, it was funny, and it taught me something and educated me on something. Then he took one step further down the rabbit hole and he made Vice, and Vice was good, better than Don't Look Up, because it still was giving me true facts and snippets here and there along the way of the Dick Cheney era and like told me true facts and things that even though it had an incredible bias on his part I still learned things throughout the entirety of the movie but then we get to don't look up don't look up you learn something in the first five minutes of the movie is that there's a real space force <laughs> there's a real NASA defense team that is actually real it has a badge people get paid to go there nine to five and that is real. And that's the last thing you learn in this movie. Everything else is total, just like, <laughs> way out there. It's just all fiction after that. <sighs> By the end of this movie, I was like, you know, if I had to suffer more of these kind of movies, I would take the meteor. <laughs> so without seeing these other movies, obviously my best picture has to go with a dune. Um... It is a masterwork of filmmaking. It may not have a deep emotional connection um, with us as an audience yet, but it's beautiful work of art. So if you'll join me, I'm gonna cont I'm gonna start my journey to watch the rest of these movies, and I'll be making reviews about each of them specifically. I will have more informed opinions later on, and I'll be making reviews of each movie, and I'll be sure to put the little Oscar symbol at the bottom corner, and I'll make a playlist, and so they'll all be categorized, so you'll see my reactions when I finally watch Belfast and Coda and all the best pictures and more. So join me on my road to the Oscars. Hope you all had a good Super Bowl weekend, good Valentine's Day.